Good afternoon, everybody. I'm looking forward to sharing our exciting developments with you today. And thank you to the judges um, for inviting us here to Athens. And we're starting? All right. This, this is an unhappy farmer. Uh, let's call him George. George has a problem. George has had a major loss of crop due to a combination of unfortunate weather and a difficult planning, field planning in this season. It's not his fault um, his fields ended up like this, but he knows there, there could have been preventative measures in place. He knows that pests, diseases, fertilizer, and irrigation can all be controlled efficiently with the right data. But when, manned, when he tried to use modern soil sampling, manned airplanes, and satellites, um, he found that they were too expensive and the data never, never came at the right time to act. Um, George has a problem and he's not alone. What George needs is data and more data faster than he could ever get before. In the last decade, there have been advances in cameras, making them smaller, more lightweight, better quality, along with improved automation in flight controllers and improvements in batteries and materials. Now, all of a sudden, we're in an era where small, unmanned aerial vehicles are able to become commercially viable and useful in a range of industries. In, in this case, we can take a lightweight, near-infrared camera, put it on a multi-rotor UAV, and map acres and acres of field in high resolution at almost any time. These platforms are inexpensive and versatile and can turn around data within hours with almost no human intervention or costs. Once the images and data are collected, using software like PIX4D will develop a number of issues or will determine a number of issues with the plant health, such as uh, nitrogen deficiencies and pests. And this helps the farmer um, determine what the best course of action is using the least amount of resources. Using our systems, we're also able to 3D map the terrain in high resolution. Um, this helps the farmers understand how irrigation and runoff flow across the field, um, which in turn allows for more efficient irrigation, pesticide and fertilizer planning in each individual field. This information can even be integrated with the GPS software and tractors to make the application of our information as seamless as possible. Um, the opportunity is enormous. Uh, the drone industry is expected to reach $80 billion within the next 10 years and 90% of that is going into the agriculture industry. Those numbers are based, are based just solely out of the United States. Um, our two companies, Bermuda Aerial Media, based in Bermuda, and Skymatics, based in Calgary, up in Canada, are in a perfect position to take the lead in this industry from the start. Uh, once regulations are in place, we will also be expanding into the US and Europe, um, building on our network and drone equipment to expand our footprint. Our team is growing with experience and our industry partners are already helping us achieve success. Um, and in conclusion, data makes farming more accurate and less wasteful. And drones make obtaining that data faster than ever and a more efficient farm is more profitable. Thank you. Hi, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I want to ask you, what kind of data do you collect from uh, from the drones? So we uh, we use ND or sorry near infrared cameras. Yes. And uh, basically, you can either use a, a basic camera and put a filter on it, or you can use dedicated cameras, um, which are built for whichever spectrum you're trying to reach. Okay, so so basically, you can adapt uh, the kind of data you collect. Uh, right. All right. Uh, another question: the the 3D mapping. Is it done through height maps, GIS uh, information, or is it through the information you get from the drones? It's purely through the information we get from the drones. Okay. We collect GPS data every time we take a photo, and okay. we take hundreds and hundreds of photos as we fly, and we can merge them together to create a full terrain map. Okay, uh, really, I'm, I'm doing it quick so everyone gets a chance. Uh, who else is active in this industry? That I mean, who, who's the industry leader in this kind of uh, operation? And do you have any differentiating factors from them, if if any? Um, there is no like, defined leader yeah. in the industry. I know there's a lot of companies in the States that are starting to, to, to grow. Um, the regulations in the States are still hampering that side of it, which is why we're moving to Canada. Um, we are basically one of the, the first service firms that want to service, provide a service to farmers so they don't have to get into the technology. They don't have to have the expenses and the, the issues. That was, uh, hi, congratulations. That was uh, the competition question. Uh, I'm not clear who is the customer. Is it the individual farmer or is it some region? Is it, is it, 
Is it cheap enough for, a sm for how small a farmer to rent your services, or do you need to sell to some kind of government body or, or collective or something like that? We would be selling directly to the farmer. So it's um, that our, cheap. our services are, are well cheap enough to, um, any farmer should be able to hire us. How cheap is that? Uh, it depends on how big the farm is. That's the question. I mean, uh, we can be operated about $400 an hour, 300 euros an hour, and we can map 500 acres or just over that in about an hour. And we can map multiple farms in one go. So how do you approach the farmers? What, uh, what's the, you have a salesperson that goes meets them, or what, uh, what, how do you reach your clients? So we're, we're actually just starting to develop this side of our business. We do a lot of other things. But um, with this, we're actually working with a few farmers, especially in Alberta, uh, to, to develop the technology to make sure it's right for them. Um, NDVI imaging has been used for the last 30 years, uh, mainly off manned airplane and satellites. But the use of drones makes it cheaper, faster, more effective, and we're just working with the farmers to make it happen for them. And how many farmers are <clears throat> involved in your pilot, I guess is my first question. And then um, how, many, how many farmers have you talked to face to face and what percentage of them say, interesting, but I don't want to deal with drones. I want you to provide the service for me. Well, we've, uh, in Alberta anyway, we've mainly dealt with, they have precision, agri precision agriculture firms who consult to different farmers and they were the ones that were most interested in it. Um, what we strive to do is go straight. So they would be your sales and delivery channel? Yes. Is that your vision? Yeah. So you're not really selling direct to farmers, your business to business to end user business. Well, we have different locations, but in Alberta, because of the size of it and the scale of some of these farms that we're working with, they use precision agriculture firms. So that's the go-to. In Bermuda, where it's a smaller market, we can approach farmers directly. But with the larger market, we have the middleman, basically. Um, well, we've been working on this soft, well, this service for the last year, and we were speaking with three main farmers. One is a precision agriculture guy, so he has multiple farms. So it's three main people that we're going to, we have a trial period starting um, in the next planting season, which is coming up in the spring. So I'm Canadian, so I have a pretty good idea of how big Alberta is, and it's, mm -hmm. it's not small, and the farms there are just huge. Um, I'm not clear on what your... Uh, your cost to revenue model is like so I'm assuming you need people to bring these drones out the people need to staff the drones while they're flying um, and uh, so I, I want a better sense of, of that how much it's going to cost you to do that and how many farms you can hit say in a one-year period with a certain staffing um, I can answer the first part I guess uh, there's a varying levels of, of the use of drones so you can go from you have a manned like a two-man team on the ground flying a, a multi-rotor or you can get a fixed wing and fly it completely autonomously from a base. And depending on you know, your demand, you can upgrade your, your drone to fly hundreds of kilometers, stay up for hours and hours, and fly itself, and come back, land itself, download all the images, and that's, that's it. Awesome. And now we're going to start with our three minutes of advice. So we can start on this end again. Well, we hear about drones all the time. They're very, you know, they're hot in the media. So. I'm suspecting that there's a lot of people uh, looking into drones and agriculture. You, you, yourself, you said the majority of the revenue will go to agricultural use, uh, well, the drone industry revenue. So uh, I guess how fast you can get uh, uh, established and how quickly you can differentiate your, yourself, either by cost or uh, uh, or uh, whatever other features you might uh, be able to offer, I think it would be critical for your uh, success. Um, I'm, I'm in no way an expert, but uh, I mean, uh, this is as far as I can tell you from an entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial uh, standpoint. Uh, thanks. Uh, my, what I was missing from your presentation, since this is a drone business, I would like to see what kind of drone you use. Is it a standard model? You make them, or you, you said you use different kinds of drones? Because probably that's one of your biggest costs anyway. So I would like to hear more about the drone itself. 
I, I believe the speed that you go to the market in a bigger scale will be critical because I'm sure that many people will be looking to innovate in this field. So going fast to the market would be critical. Yeah, and I would say entrepreneurs don't say we'll wait till next spring for spring. It's spring in the world somewhere right now. Get the damn drones in the air and mm -hmm. claim the top of the mountain as leaders in this field. And congratulations on a terrific presentation. Now turn a terrific presentation into a great business. Yeah, I, uh, I think you're going to struggle to produce barriers to entry for other people. I think the only thing you can really do is build, uh, build loyalty, brand loyalty, as, as quickly as possible. So to that end, yeah, you have to move as quickly as possible to get your name out there, to get recognition as, as high as possible, because only that way are you going to stop someone really big with a lot of money just coming in and, and dominating the industry. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.